about July rate cuts. Yes, folks, once again, Joseph Wang, crash up, is probably right. He uh, just put out a tweet the other day that we talked about the Fed potentially cutting rates sooner than we expect. And after today's CPI reading, which we will go through in a minute, we have to seriously think about July rate cuts. Now, of course, as I have always done, I will hold to my guns and still say November and 50 basis point cuts. I like to be consistent. I like to admit when I'm wrong because it's an opportunity for me to learn. But yes, folks, we're going to go through this CPI data, and I want to ask you, could you see a July rate cut? Because again, remember, one of the things that the Fed is doing is they are looking at a clearly weakening labor market, which they see. They are now seeing true deflation, deflation, not disinflation, in a lot of economic factors. They also understand that shelter, although still running hot, is horribly miscalculated and will eventually roll over. So July rate cuts are a real possibility after today's CPI. So what did we get? Again, remember, every time we talk inflation, we will go over four metrics. We will talk headline core. We will talk month on month and year on year. And again, remember, the Fed is really focused on core. We will go with headline first. Headline was expected to be 3.4 year on year. It came in below expectations at 3.3. Month on month reading was expected to be up 0.1. It too came in light at 0 0.0. All right, now for the all important core. It was expected to come in at 3.5. It too came in low at 3.4%. And then finally, the fourth and final metric, uh, core month on month was expected to be up 0.3. It was only up 0.2. So you went four for four with all four readings being light. Again, we will get more data tomorrow on PPI. We will get the Fed announcement later today, the dot plot, lots of stuff still coming. But folks, Stable prices, full employment, right? Stable banking system. This is are the Fed's charters. We're going to hear a lot about this in the next several hours when the Fed announces their June decision. No rate cut coming. We will hear more when Powell is in front of a mic. And again, most importantly, we are going to get the dot plot. The dot plot later this afternoon has a chance to throw the market into a tizzy. What will the experts in you and I be talking about tomorrow? How many rate cuts in 2024? How soon are the rate cuts? Any of the Fed presidents saying no rate cuts? Is any of the Fed presidents talking about going higher? Well, now that we have a clearly weakening job market, we have um, inflation rolling over four for four, again, lower than expected, shelter still coming in. You, I mean, seriously, we had Bank of Canada cut. We had uh, the ECB cut. I am, let me be very clear. I do not want a July rate cut. I believe a July rate cut and the expectations for more could unleash the animal spirits. It could reignite inflation. Folks, if we cut in July... My fear is we are dancing with the devil that we've seen before. Go back and look at the late 70s, early 80s. We had an inflation problem. We felt we were winning. We cut rates. The animal spirits unlocked, and we had to do it again. And eventually, Paul Volcker had to say enough and took stuff to 18%. I don't want that. I want this thing dead and buried. I do not want us to reignite inflation, but what I want doesn't freaking matter. We may be seriously talking about a July rate cut. Again, you have to, you have to look at the data objectively and say, after this morning, it is certainly possible. But again, in three or four short hours, it will, we will see what the 19 voting members of the Fed have to say. The 18 Fed presidents plus Jerome Powell, we're going to see what the dot plot looks like. And all of this might change. But yes, very, very important stuff. 
And now, more importantly, why do I think inflation might reignite? Well, great news. We got data on mortgage applications this morning. And if you don't remember, the um, mortgage rates dropped last week. They didn't quite break 7%, but they got really close. I think 7.03% was the low last week. That was down significantly from the week before where it was at 7.3 and 7.4. So a significant drop. But what the heck happened? Folks, I keep telling you this. Rates freaking matter. Rates matter. We have learned that the American consumer thinks seven is bad, six is good. So what happened? Well, mortgage applications surged 16%, double digits, 16% week on week. Uh, refi, demand, refi, refi demand was up 28%. That's just wild. Purchase apps were up 9%. So I want to ask you. CPI came in light across all four metrics. I have no doubt, no doubt that the 10-year treasury will fall. My only question for you is, this is a serious question. Will mortgage rates go below 7% today or will it be tomorrow? Folks, we are, we are dangerously close to reigniting the animal spirits. We are, we are seeing housing inventory build, but now that we're out of the spring selling season, inventory coming on the market will slow, but will demand build? Man, it is going to be wild. Folks, I want to let you know about a very special and very unique live stream that I did last night. I didn't get a chance to talk to you in the morning because we were traveling. So one of the things we did last night is I gave you my nine money rules. Yes, had a chance on the plane to kind of brainstorm nine of the money rules. Do me a favor, take a look at that video. It was a live stream, no editing. Let me know what you think of those nine money rules because they are important. They all work together. I want you to be rich. I want you to be wealthy. I want you to enjoy a long and happy season three, but you got to get through season two. You got to grind, disposable income, become elite. Watch the video, all those important things. All right, folks, we got PIMCO. PIMCO's making some moves, folks. PIMCO's making some moves. PIMCO's highlighting that re regional bank failures to continue as they suffer property pain from a concentrated portfolio. Folks, we heard the FDIC. I think the FDIC identified 62 banks that were on the troubled asset list, but they were tiny. They were micro, right? All 62 banks combined, I think, was $82 billion in assets, so they're micro. But yes, tiny banks with a concentrated real estate portfolio, bad. They are in trouble. Uh, but what's happening? Folks, the rich are buying. Remember Jonathan Gray, Blackstone, I think it was three months ago. He called the freaking bottom. He called the bottom in Class A commercial real estate. Now we've got PIMCO. PIMCO, they're the bond guys. PIMCO is amassing a property portfolio, and they have been doing that over the last 18 months. They are buying distressed debt, aka the loan on troubled assets. Folks, we have a real wave of distress coming. We have $441 billion in loans coming due in the next year at commercial banks, and the rich are shopping. Folks, these are signals. These are the rich calling their shot. But remember, what am I telling you? Folks, most of us, myself included, we are not playing in large Class A assets. We don't have that stroke. We don't play in that game. But trust me, Class B and Class C assets are equally, if not more, distressed the pain is coming. We are in the second inning of this. Again, I want to remind you about multiple apartment buildings we bought last time. They were in pain for years until the bank foreclosed and we were able to get them for less than 50% of the original offer price. I remember an 18 unit building offered for 1.44 million for two years until the lender foreclosed and we picked it up at 700. 
This stuff is coming, folks. Start networking. Start learning. Get a buy box. It's right there for you. I hope you do the work. Uh, next up, folks, we obviously have this amazing school community. We now are in the top 1,500. Uh, we, three, two weeks ago, we were in the top 5,000. We are in the top 1,500. So thank you for joining. Thank you for being interactive. A lot of you have asked for a session on self-management. I can't help you with that. We do not self-manage. We do not want to self-manage. But the one and only Dion, Dion, uh, the lazy landlord, he has scheduled in school uh, on June 19th, June 19th at 5 p.m. Pacific, he will be hosting a Zoom session about self-management. Also want you to know that uh, the Lumberjack Landlord has agreed to do a session as well. Uh, we are just trying to lock that down. So again, folks, when you join school, when you ask questions, when you tell us what you're looking for, we're going to get you the right resource to help you out. So again, join school is 20 bucks a month. You get, you get to ask questions, answer questions, talk about your portfolio. You get thousands of dollars in free education. I don't know why you haven't signed up yet. Sign up today. Big news, big news, big news. VA Veteran Affairs has quickly, I got to give them credit, the VA came through. The VA has adjusted the rules and now the seller can pay the buyer's commission. Folks, this is something that we identified in the NAR lawsuit that was a problem. It was a non-allowable expense historically. It is now allowed. The VA, in, frankly, in record times, has adjusted the rules so that now uh, you, the VA will, the seller can pay the buyer's commission. So shout out VA, nice job, congratulations, very, very cool. All righty, folks, I want to hear, are you Team Goldman, Goldman Sachs, or Team Moody's? want to give a shout out to Lance Lambert from Resi Club and put out an article yesterday talking about alternative views between Goldman Sachs and Moody's. Uh, Goldman Sachs is saying that essentially how home prices over the next several years will continue to appreciate at pretty nice pace. We're talking 3.8%. 2024, 4.4 in 2025, 4.9 in 2026 and 2027. That's that's some healthy growth, if you ask me. Where Moody's is on the other side. They're talking about 1.5% in 2024, then only 0.3% in 25 and 0.9% in 26, rounding out 2027 with 1.7%. So again, folks, home appreciation being down. So are you Team Goldman? Housing is going to the moon. Are you Team Moody's? Folks, we're going flat. Hopefully by now you know where I land. I am Team Moody's on this one. I think we've got the decade of appreciation in the first three years. But heck, I am wrong all the time. So let me know in the comments below. Are you Team Moody's or Team Goldman Sachs? Anything else we want to talk about today? Lots of stuff. Mortgage apps. We did that. Oh, you know what? Let's give a shout out to WeWorks. Folks, if you were on my channel five years ago, one of the things that we were talking about was WeWork a lot. Well, WeWork um, had a failed IPO. Then they went IPO. Then they went bankrupt. Today or yesterday, they emerged from bankruptcy. What happened in bankruptcy? Well, they renegotiated 190 leases and they exited or closed down 170 locations. This is why bankruptcy is a tool these are, you could not renegotiate leases uh, until you were bankrupt, and they are now. So, folks, have an amazing day. Like, subscribe, comment. We've got to seriously consider July rate cuts. And, folks, if you're not following Joseph Wang, uh, Joseph Wang has a YouTube channel. He puts out an excellent video every Saturday. If you follow him on Twitter or X, I think he is FedGuy12, FedGuy12. Man, things are getting wild out there. Like, subscribe, comment, and again, time to join school. I'll put a link below. Later.